Nutrition in Plants Introduction Food is essential for all living organisms. Carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals are the main components of food. These are called nutrients. Nutrients are required for body building, growth and recovery of damaged muscles. Plants can make their food themselves but human beings and animals depend on plants for food. They also depend on some animals that eat plants. Thus, they directly or indirectly depend on plants. Mode of Nutrition in Plants Green plants are able to make food for themselves by using carbon dioxide, water and minerals. These materials are already present in their surroundings. When this food is eaten by all living organisms, it produces energy to carry out life processes. Nutrition is the mode of taking food by an organism and its utilization by the body. The mode of nutrition in which organisms make their food themselves is called autotrophic. Hence, plants are called autotrophs. They are also called producers. On the other hand, the mode of nutrition in which organisms take already made food is called heterotrophic. All living organisms except plants take food from plants, hence are called heterotrophs. Photosynthesis Green plants make their food in their leaves. These are called the food factory of a plant. The cells of green leaves and young stems of plants contain numerous green structures called chloroplasts. The chloroplasts are green because of the presence of a green pigment called chlorophyll. It is chlorophyll that traps energy from sunlight and the air through tiny pores called stomata. These pores are located on the surface of the leaves and surrounded by guard cells. The synthesis of food in plants occurs in leaves. Therefore, all the raw materials must reach there. Plants take in carbon dioxide from the surrounding air through stomata. Water and minerals present in the soil are absorbed by the roots and transported to the leaves. Water and minerals are transported to the leaves by thin strands like filaments which spread like pipes throughout the root, stem, branches and the leaves. Using the energy from the sun, a chemical reaction takes place in the green parts of the plant in which carbon dioxide and water are converted into carbohydrates. Oxygen is released in this process. Carbon dioxide plus water gives rise to carbohydrates plus oxygen in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight. Since the synthesis of food occurs in the presence of sunlight, it is called photosynthesis. Photo, light, synthesis to prepare. So we find that chlorophyll, sunlight, carbon dioxide, water and minerals are necessary to carry out the process of photosynthesis. It is a unique process on the earth. The solar energy is captured by the leaves and stored in the plant in the form of food. Thus, the sun is the ultimate source of energy for all living organisms. The food synthesized by the green leaves is transported to the other parts of the plant by the stem. In most plants, carbohydrate is converted into starch and stored in leaves, stems, roots, etc. The presence of starch in leaves indicates the occurrence of photosynthesis. The food prepared by plants provides nutrition not only to the plants but also to every living organism directly or indirectly released by plants in photosynthesis process. Hence, it maintains the balance in the nature and supports life on the earth. An activity to prove that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis. Materials required A potted plant, a black paper, L-shaped stencil, iodine solution, a dropper. Method Take a potted plant. Keep it in dark for four days. Take a black paper and cut a simple L shape in it by using a stencil. Cover one leaf with this paper. Leave the setup in sunlight 
for 6 to 8 hours. Now, detach the leaf and perform iodine test for the presence of starch. Observation The part of the leaf that could get sunlight, that is, L-shaped portion and rest part of the leaf exposed to sunlight turns blue-black in color. Conclusion Since the portion of the leaf exposed to sunlight shows the presence of starch, this proves that the sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis in plants. An activity to prove that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis. Materials required Leaf of coleus or croton plant Iodine solution A dropper Method The leaves of coleus plant and croton plants are partly green and partly non-green red, violet, pink or yellow. Take the leaf of one of these plants that has been exposed to sunlight for the few hours. Perform iodine test in the leaf for the presence of starch. Observation The green part of the leaf turns blue-black while non-green part remains same. Conclusion Since only green part of the leaf shows the presence of starch, this proves that the green pigment chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis. Synthesis of plant food other than carbohydrates Carbohydrates that plants synthesize during photosynthesis are made up of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. They are used to synthesize other components of food such as proteins and fats. Proteins contain nitrogen. Though air contains large amount of nitrogen, plants cannot absorb this nitrogen directly. They get nitrogen in two ways. Soil contains certain bacteria called rhizobium that convert atmospheric nitrogen into water-soluble compounds. Plants absorb these compounds along with water to get nitrogen. Farmers add fertilizers rich in nitrogen to the soil. These are absorbed by plants. Other modes of nutrition in plants Heterotrophic nutrition like humans and animals, non-green plants such as fungi and bacteria cannot prepare their own food as they do not have chlorophyll. They depend directly or indirectly on green plants for their nutrition. This mode of nutrition is called heterotrophic nutrition. So, they are known as heterotrophs. Some non-green plants live in or on other green plants and derive their food from them. For example, daughter plant sucks food from another plant using root-like structures. Such plants are called parasites. The plant from which a parasite gets food is called a host. The plant kingdom also has plants that consume insects. The Venus flytrap and pitcher plant catch insects by inventive methods. They are known as insectivorous plants. In the pitcher plant, a leaf becomes modified to form a pitcher-like structure with a lid which can open and close the mouth of the pitcher. Inside the pitcher, there are hair which are directly downwards. When an insect lands in the pitcher, the lid closes and the trapped insect gets entangled into the hair. The cells of the pitcher plant secrete digestive juices to digest the insect. Venus flytrap and pitcher plant grow in soil that is not so rich in nitrogen. They use the nutrients obtained from insects to synthesize the food they prepare by photosynthesis. Saprotrophic Nutrition Some non-green plants live on dead and decaying plants and animals and derive their food from them. Examples are mushrooms and other fungi and bacteria. They secrete digestive juices on the dead and decaying matter. This juice converts the dead and decaying matter into a solution which is absorbed by the fungi and bacteria. This method of getting nutrients from dead and decaying matter in the form of a liquid is known as saprotrophic nutrition. Plants which use saprotrophic mode of nutrition are called saprotrophs. Fungi also grow on pickles, leather, clothes and other articles that are left in hot and humid weather for a long time. Symbiotic Nutrition Some organisms rest on others and share both shelter 
and nutrients. This relationship is called symbiotic relationship. For example, fungi live inside the roots of some plants. The plants provide nutrients to the fungi and in return, fungi provides water and certain nutrients. In organisms called lichens, a chlorophyll-containing partner, which is an alga and a fungus, live together. The fungus provides shelter, water and minerals to the alga and, in return, the alga prepares and provides food for the fungus. Replenishing Nutrients in the Soil Plants absorb minerals and nutrients from the soil for their growth and development. So, their amounts in the soil keep on declining. Therefore, these nutrients need to be added from time to time to enrich the soil. We can grow healthy plants only if we fulfill the nutrient requirement of the plant. Soil nutrients can be replenished by adopting the few methods such as by applying fertilizers. Fertilizers and manures contain plant nutrients like nitrogen, potassium and phosphorus etc. These nutrients need to be added time to time to enrich the soil. By adding compost. Compost is the organic waste made from the decomposition of biodegradable waste by microorganisms. It is added in the soil to make up for the loss of nutrients and to increase soil fertility. By growing leguminous crops. Leguminous plants like peas, beans, gram, pulses etc. have rhizobium bacteria in their roots. These bacteria have the ability to fix atmospheric nitrogen into the plant in usable form of nitrogen. After the harvest, the soil become deficient in nitrogen. Although nitrogen gas is available in plenty in the air, plants cannot use it in the manner they can use carbon dioxide. They need nitrogen in the soluble form. The bacterium, called rhizobium, can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into usable form but rhizobium cannot make their own food. So, they live in the nodules of leguminous plants and provide them with nitrogen. In return, plants provide food and shelter to the bacteria. Take a piece of bread, sprinkle some water over it and leave it in a hot place for two to three days. Now, when you see the bread, you will see a greenish brown or greenish yellow coating on the bread. This coating seems like fluffy patches of cotton-like threads. These fluffy patches are called fungi. Actually, fungi cannot make their own food. They feed on dead and decaying matter. They secrete digestive juices into dead and decaying matter. These juices convert dead matter into a solution. Fungi absorbs this solution and gets nutrients from it to synthesize their food.